Okay, good, good evening, everyone. Let me thank you all for coming. Um, first thing we always do at these awards nights, as we do so many things here at BG, is start off with a prayer. So I'm gonna ask Joe Borowski, my go-to man when it comes to prayers for these, to come up. Joe is a senior and plays on both the boys' volleyball team as well as runs track. And Joe, please lead us in prayer this one more time, please. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, thank you for the gifts and abilities that you have given the Bishop Girton student athletes. We thank you for the determination to run the extra mile, to get in the extra rep, and to be the best we can be at all times. We realize that we would not be successful without the hard work of the coaches, parents, and our fans. So we ask you to bless them in a special way. We pray for all those who have not had the uh, abilities to participate in the athletics that we have had here at BG. We pray these things as always through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In the, name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Thank you again, Joe. So summer's here, and it's a time for us to all rest and recharge. But before we go our separate ways, I wanted to just bring everyone together once more and honor our spring sports achievements. We try to do these early, and there's conflicts. We try to do them a little later, and everyone is gone. So I thank you all for making the effort to be here tonight. I'm sure there's plans that had to be made, graduation parties that are being delayed, moved around. So I, thank, I do thank you. Um, the reason why we moved, moved it is, uh, is quite simple. Last Thursday we were supposed to be here, um, but in all honesty, I could not do that. Our girls lacrosse team fighting for the championship had their game moved from Tuesday to Thursday, and I said, hey, let's get everybody there who can go, and I think the results paid off pretty well, and they marked their first Division I championship this year. And I know it's a little warm, and there's lots of things to do, so I'll try to keep it brief, so I'll let the coaches do most of the talking about their teams. Um, so I'll, we'll start it off right away. Uh, there are nine teams that compete during the spring season, and the first one up is going to be our baseball team. Coach Scott Painter is going to make those presentations to the baseball team. All right, like Mr. Palladino said, I'm going to keep it brief as well. I know everybody's got things to do, graduation parties, cookouts, whatnot. Uh, this is our fifth year, Coach Sheedy and myself, who Coach couldn't be here, unfortunately. Uh, our fifth straight year with 10-plus wins, uh, which is uh, you know, probably one of the best things the program's done in a long time. Uh, we graduate seven seniors this year, uh, which is less than our 11 last year. Uh, we had a good group of kids this year, good group of seniors. Uh, we started quite a few underclassmen. Um, so those kids were, were developed by this group of seniors, which is good for us moving forward. Uh, for the first time in our program's history, we started a freshman um, in the outfield for us. Um, you know, it's Tyler Faulkner who's here for us tonight. Uh, we have started a freshman pitcher before. First year we started a freshman position player, uh, so that speaks well to him. Uh, we also started a sophomore most of the year, sophomore on the mound. Um, so moving forward, we're in pretty good shape. Um, we unfortunately lost to Keene in the quarterfinals, a uh, game we go out there, everyone that's traveled to Keene knows how that is, you go out there and compete against those guys. 5-4, uh, you know, good game, should have probably pulled away with it, but it is what it is. We had a good showing this year. Um, the three kids we're going to, uh, we, we had three All-State kids who I'd like to recognize first. Uh, Drew Sanborn, who's unfortunately in, in Punta Cana, which everyone feels bad for him. Uh, he was a first-team All-State kid, ended up hitting 410 for us, which is really good. 
Uh, we had Matt Tierney, who was the second team All-State kid for us, uh, was a 380 hitter. Uh, also three shutout wins on the mound for us. Beat Alvern 3-0 uh, after their kid had thrown 31 straight innings without giving up a run. Uh, he was a second team kid. And Jake McMaster, who's a junior, has been a two-year starter for us, was a third team kid. Uh, so those are our three All-State kids. The three kids we're going to recognize tonight, we've gone with three MVPs. Uh, years past, we've gone MVP, MIP, uh, and Coach's Award. This year, we went three most valuable players. Uh, simply, they're, they're three kids, three seniors. Um, one kid, uh, the first kid we'll recognize um, is our catcher, uh, Ryan McGaughy. Uh, he's a kid that, quite frankly, was a JV kid as a junior. Uh, showed up this year. We weren't exactly sure what we had with him. Uh, he turned out to be an absolute stud. Uh, you know, was, was uh, nominated for all states, uh, hit 350 for us, was probably one of the best defensive kids we had in the state. And moving forward, if I could have a catcher like him every year, I'd, I'd be more than happy. It'd, it'd probably be one of the best things we could do. So first kid we'll give an award to is Ryan McGaughy. Second kid that'll get an award tonight uh, is one of the kids that I just mentioned. He's a senior All-State kid. Uh, coming into this year, we weren't sure what we had. We knew what we had defensively at first base. Uh, he had started for us last year. He was one of the best kids in the state. On the mound, we weren't sure what we had. Uh, we had a junior get hurt, so he was kind of forced into being a starter for us. Uh, and as I said, was 3-0, had a 2.25 ERA. 3-2, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 2.25 ERA. Uh, for some reason, was really good when he started. You know, kind of, kind of got hit around a little bit when he came in at relief. But great kid, uh, great character kid for us was the senior captain, uh, Matt Tierney. And the third kid that's going to get an award tonight, I'll have to hand deliver to him because unfortunately, as I said, he's in Punta Cana. Um, Drew Sanborn, the first team All-State kid, had 23 RBIs, 19 runs, uh, hit 410. Uh, that's, that's pretty good. He was one of the top kids in Division I baseball this year. Had he not wanted to go and, and uh, punt for UNH, probably could have been a D1 baseball player somewhere. Uh, so that's, that's the third kid that will get an award for us tonight. Uh, and that's all I got. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to call up Coach Nicole Adamson to present the major awards to the members of the girls softball squad. Good evening. Thank you all for coming. Um, wanted to take just a moment also. I, I know, be efficient. Everyone has somewhere to be. Um, but thanks to our athletic office, Pete and Steve, for their support this season, and to our softball parents for support, not only at the games, but everything else that went into making sure that your daughters could participate in the Bishop Girton softball program. So thank you very much. And uh, congratulations to all the student athletes that are here tonight. And, Goes across. Well done. <laughs> um, our softball team had a very successful season this year. Um, one of the most successful seasons that our program has had. Uh, this year's softball team is one of only three teams to ever make it to the final four for the softball tournament. So they did very well. So congratulations. <laughs> We had three All-State players, all first team All-State this year, sophomore Nasa Ouellette, senior Leah Perez, and senior Tori Dubois. <laughs> it 
and we had two seniors that were asked to represent Bishop Girton at the Granite State Senior Games, uh, Leah Perez and Tori Dubois, so thank you. Um, their character, their representation of the Bishop Girton community was stellar. Um, practices and games, they did a nice job representing our community. Um, they played with heart and built some, some very important bonds. It was very impressive. So, ladies, thank you. Uh, um, we give out three awards for softball. Uh, we have Dedication Award, uh, Leadership Award, and the St. Sebastian Award. And everyone pretty much understands what the Dedication Awards are for and the Leadership Awards. But every now and then I get a question or two, what's the St. Sebastian Award? Um, it could be something very similar to a Coach's Award. Um, but here, Bishop Girton, uh, our community, um, St. Sebastian is the patron saint of athletes. And he not only um, participated in athletics, but he also spoke and taught uh, with passion about the game. So it kind of raises it up a little bit more in our eyes in terms of an award. Um, this year, our dedication award um, goes to a senior that said thank you every day, Gina Pastizzi. Dakota here to bang. Um, we also had another very um, strong senior this year, uh, very dedicated to our program, her sport, her team, uh, Jocelyn Petrie. Our leadership award um, goes to a player, a senior this year, that has been um, a quiet leader um, all years that she's been part of our program, Leah Perez. And our St. Sebastian Award recipient this year, this is her second year receiving this award of high honor, Tori Du Bois. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Coach Tom Lazat to present the major awards to the members of the boys' tennis team. Thank you. I've only got 10 pages, so it won't take too long. Here, so. um, First and foremost, uh, I represent the coach for the boys' tennis team. This year, our team finished our record of six and eight. We had a uh, fairly successful season, had a couple of tough matches where we probably could have pulled them out, but um, through excellent play by the opponents, we didn't finish in the win column here. But um, more importantly, though, our team went from a roster, <clears throat> excuse me, of about of seven players last year to having a roster. We had 13 freshmen sign up for the team this year, so uh, it looks like we've got a pretty strong future ahead of us for the team, which will bode well for us. 
Now to the awards. Um, the first award that we, re that we give out is the MVP award. Uh, that award basically, in my opinion, is given to the player to me that shows uh, some of the most promising and uh, effective team leadership on, uh, for, our, for our players. Uh, the player started out the season winning the majority of his matches quite handily. Um, as the season progressed and the opponents came, became a little bit stronger each and every time, we were kind of like front loaded with the easy matches and the last half was really tough matches here. But as the season progressed um, and the oppo opponents improved, he still remained strong and, and determined to win all of these matches, uh, many times successfully, other times not so. But many times you'd think he was down and out and just through you know, perseverance and strong will, he ended up being very uh, successful in his matches. He finished the season nine and five in singles and eight and five in doubles. And his com commitment to the team was really far above my expectations. Uh, he's been with, with the team for four years now, I believe. So it's my pleasure to give the Most Valuable Player Award to Jason Lutzka. Uh, this next award, the Coach's Award. Uh, the Coach's Award, in my opinion, is determined by that player who gives a lot of energy to the team, who supports the other players on the team, who's always there um, providing encouragement and you know, supporting the players as they're in, their, in the midst of their matches. Um, he'd also admit to me many times when he played not up to par, but wasn't afraid to step up and say, Coach, and I think I could have done better. So it show, showed me a lot of great character in this player. Um, I also view the award as, as that player that goes, you know, real growth and maturity over the years. And some of the other players are smirking because they know what I mean here. But he's also inspired and helped most of our underclassmen who unfortunately are not here today either. But, um, you know, I could always count on, on this guy to, lead the team before every match in a rally to get us all juiced up um, and it was really quite entertaining the other coaches complimented me many times on his uh, leadership skills as a cheerleader and a kind of a you know instilling that that fire with our team so he's been supportive of all of them so it's my pleasure to give that award to John Crepian Uh, the next award, Most Improved Player Award. <clears throat> Where do you begin with that? Because the whole team, <clears throat> as every coach realizes here, through practice, through matches, through games, your whole team improves uh, tremendously over the course of the season. So it becomes a really tough, tough challenge to kind of single out one single person who does that. But, you know, through the match play and everything, uh, our job really now is to select that player who showed growth both personally and um, th as, a, as a team player. He's, as the year progressed and the level of competition that he faced really, really improved uh, and became very, very tough. He stepped up to the plate in many, many ways. Uh, we, we worked on managing points, not trying to hit the winner on every shot. This after finally convincing him that you know, the ESPN truck doesn't park by the side of the court waiting for the uh, highlight reel shots. So you know, he learned to finally stay within himself 
and play smart and play intelligently. Towards the end of the year, we had a really a second tough match against Bedford, and the player for Bedford is one of the top-ranked players in the state. He narrowly lost to him the first time, but uh, the second time again after that, you know, mindful uh, on his own desire and listening to some, you know, advice. Uh, he finally put it together and ended up beating that player. So he finished up the season at 500, which was a really strong achievement given the opponents that he, that he faced. So it's my pr uh, pleasure to, to give this award to Brian Chow. Uh, there was there's, there's one other award that I had asked Mr. Palladino about. Um, it was called the, I, we decided to call it the Dedication and Commitment Award, given to a player that has been a tremendous ambassador and spokesman for the, for the team, has been with me at many of the incoming freshman orientations. Unfortunately, he's not here to hear all the accolades, so I won't bore you with all the details, but um, that, that award was going to go to, and is going to, uh, Ryan Mudd. Now for the awards going to the members of the girls' tennis team, I'd like to have Coach Barry Dinya come up and make those presentations. So, girls tennis team had a very tough, challenging season. The wins were tough to come by. Um, but I give it to my players for giving everything they had. Um, good news is we have no seniors, so we have all the players coming back next year. And. Uh, my hope is that they learned and we're going to be back stronger and better. Uh, so, I want to give the awards. It was a toss up because you all have the same qualities. So, most, val most valuable player goes to Paige Kanet. Coach's award goes to a girl who she's not imposing. If you look at her, she's like this tall. She doesn't have a big game, but every time after the match, you see her winning. So I'm going to give the coach's award to Kiki Murphy. She's not here. But so. Next is uh, most improved. This girl, she barely made varsity, but towards the end of the season, she was one of the top players in the team. So obviously, most improved player goes to Claire Marty, but she's not here, so put your hands together. You notice that all the awards are going to players who are not here, so I don't know what's going on with the girls' tennis team. Okay, so dedication and commitment. 
Uh, this girl had a tough season, tough to win, very challenging, but keeping her head high, trying hard all the time, not slumping her shoulders, uh, coming to practice, all the good stuff. So dedication and commitment goes to Madison Gilbertson. She's not here. Thank you. Next up and moving along, I'd like to introduce Coach Kurt Schultz, who will make the presentations to the members of the Boys and Girls Outdoor Track Team. Um, before I start, I'd like to recognize some people. Um, track and field is a kind of unique sport. Um, we only have one official that the NHIA provides for us. And then we need 17 other officials and then helpers to get us through the track meet. Six timers, a starter, a scorer, a, a line judge, and every field event needs its own official, someone who knows the event well enough to do it. Um, and these are all volunteers, and that really falls heavily on my uh, coaching staff and on my parents, who always step up and is able to get us through our home meets, and every one of our meets this year, our regular season meet, were a home meet except for one. So I really would like, though there were many people who stepped up, I really rec recognize uh, a couple of um, parents that were there at every single meet and ran one of those field events for us at every meet uh, and really took some of the burden off my coaching staff and that was the Poublons and the Silks. So I'd like to recognize them. <laughs> Our season went pretty much as we expected. Uh, we had lost a lot through uh, graduation in the last couple of years. We didn't have um, some of the real elite athletes that like, were the top athletes in New England. They were very good athletes. Uh, some were actually exceptional, but not quite the same elite level that we had. So in the regular season, the girls were four and one. The boys were three and two. The girls finished six out of the 19 teams in Division I, and the boys finished 10th, right in the middle. So pretty much what we expected. You know, we always hoped for better. Hope nothing happens and it's worse, but pretty much what we expected as a coaching staff. Um, so as we go on, I'd, I'd like to give out our awards. And this year, we decided to do something different. Um, we're going to give all three of our athletes the same award. I don't think it's appropriate to give somebody, the, all three people, the most valuable award for what it implies. And all of them obviously must have improved a great deal to represent. So we're going to give all three coaches award. And I think that signifies everything that a coach wants in an athlete. Someone who's dedicated, someone who strives to be the best they can be, someone who performs well at meets, especially the big ones. So I think the coaches award represents what's best for these three athletes. And do the boys first. First one is going to uh, a member who's not here right now. Unless, uh, he just came in. Um, he was by far our best field event person. And he also did running events, was in both relays. He individually qualified uh, for the meet, scored at the division meet, individually qualified for the meet champions, and that's Alex Arica. The next young man was by far our best track performer. At every meet this year, he performed four running events for us. He was the top sprinter. He uh, qualified for the meet of champions as a division scorer. He would do both of our relays at every meet, and he would uh, do our sprints for us, and that is Justin Thompson. Uh, 
Um, one of the things that's happened this year was we had lost quite a bit of our coaching staff over the last couple of years, uh, including our pole vault coach the last two years. Um, we ended up not actually even having a pole vault coach, someone who could specialize in this event. And this young man would go down to Southboro, Mass all the time, work with the um, Patriot Pole Vault Club, and he would come back. And he was basically our pole vault coach for our entire team. Not only that, he excelled at this event. And in fact, just yesterday at the New England Champions, he was the top pole vaulter in the state of New Hampshire. So I'd like to recognize Tom Lampagnon. Now for the girls. It was easy to select these three girls as they scored 75% of all the points we scored at the division meet. They're there every day. They work as hard as any athletes I've ever coached. Uh, they're a credit to BG and uh, I do appreciate everything that they've done for our program this year. The first one is, uh, is not here. She's actually having a graduation party as we speak. Um, she is a two-time individually state uh, individual champion. Um, she had the best triple jump of any athlete in the state of New Hampshire this year, uh, and she obviously was the division triple jump champion. Uh, she qualified, she was the only athlete that we had we qualified in more than one event for the New Englands, and yesterday she participated in both the hurdles and the triple jump for us, and that's Brianna Silk. second girl, um, I think it's incredible for the way she's able to perform multiple events on the same day at an extraordinary level. At the division meet, she ran the 16, came in second. She was third in the 800, which came shortly after the 16. And she was also part of the 4x4, four four, which also placed at the division meet. Um, again, she was representing BG at the New England yesterday, and she was an all-state selection. That's Chloe Conway. last one is our probably our most versatile athlete on, on the girls team. Uh, she does everything from cross country to uh, hurdles, high jump, she's in both relays and sometimes her own um, talents get in her way of trying to excel in any one particular event because we're pulling her in so many directions. She basically saved us at the division meet pulling out of the high jump, right in the middle of the high jump, to run the relay after Bree was unable to uh, continue in the meet. Um, she was a New England qualifier, and uh, that's Danielle Hubon. Again, with all of the events that were going on, unfortunately, Coach Matt Box is not able to be here, nor his team uh, the, the, for the boys' volleyball team. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. Sorry, you got it. <laughs> sorry you didn't get an award, but <laughs> uh, Coach is not here, so uh, we'll, we'll move on to our last two. Um, Coach Cameron, Coach Caveney are not able to be here as well, uh, but they're able body assistant. Kristen Cameron, 
is going to just announce the awards for. Are you okay? Or is that, was that was he pulling my leg when he said that? You're oh, okay. Well, Coach, K I will take care of it then. I, I have the plaques up here. Do you want to come up and at least take, oh, the, the guys aren't even here? No, I'm, there's nobody here. So, <laughs> Kristen, I got it. Really. But the. Uh, See, the problem is nobody's here, though, right? Yeah, no, none of them are here, so. so do, you was, wanna, do you wanna just read I'll, Yeah, Spencer I'll just take it. Spencer <laughs> Allen? Okay, so the Boys Lacrosse Coaches Awards go to Nigel Laskawa, uh, Danny Fenn, Dylan Hayes, and Brendan McBarish. And we also have two additional awards for Spencer Allen and Mitch Foster. Thanks. Well done, Kristen, without a script either. <laughs> Again, Coach Cameron is, is coaching. Some, a lot of the kids are already in, in tournaments out, out of town, and uh, you know, so they, uh, they are not able to be here today, but they did, uh, I do want to commend them on a great run. I know it was disappointing for the, for the team uh, and the coaching staff. They had won the state championship five years in a row, but as I tried to, to tell some people, there are 15 teams sitting at home last night wishing they could be in that championship game. So it, it's just, Unfortunate that they uh, they look at it that way that they didn't win it all. It was a disappointing season when they had a tre tremendous season, finishing 17 and two regular season. So I think that does deserve a round of applause. And Coach already texted me this morning saying, "Don't worry, we got it next year. Don't worry, we'll be back." <laughs> uh, that brings us to our final team of the evening. Um, a historic season to be sure. Coach Kerry D. Ambrose, first year coach here at Bishop Burton, <laughs> stepped right up. Had three losses, I believe, all year. Beat two of those teams in the in the uh, the run to the finals and brought home the first ever girls lacrosse division one state championship. So, Coach D. Ambrose. I'm just so short. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure, and I want to thank all the girls for accepting me into their program. I know they've had a couple change in coaches, and um, also for BG for actually taking a chance on me. So um, it's exciting. Um, for our season, we finished the regular season 14 and three. We then overall um, went to 17 and three. Again, winning the Division I state championship, which was awesome. So we had some team awards all around, which are amazing, that are kind of voted on by other coaches and outside. So we actually had um, Bryn Carroll and Caroline Boudreau go to Pennsylvania for the national lacrosse tournament, which you actually have to try out for and get picked to go and be a part of, and they did an awesome job there. For Allstate, we had the most Allstate kids out of all the teams, which was very exciting. We had Caroline Boudreau, Bryn Carroll, Lauren Trepany, Carly Caveney on first team, and then we had Kristen Cameron on second team, which is awesome. We also had two academic All-Americans, Kristen Cameron and Carly Caveney. From there, um, all of the coaches vote on all the seniors in the division and pick for an all-star team that is going to be played, an all-star team, an all-star game, which is the Twin State game, which will be played on June 20th, and Lauren Trepany will be the goalie.
All right. So I'll start off with our first award. It's our most improved award. This goes to a girl that never picked up a stick until like maybe a week before the season. Uh, she's not here tonight, unfortunately, um, but a girl that if she was here would probably cry right now, but never gives up, would sit there like, coach, am I doing it? Am I doing it? You know, learned how to cradle is gonna be um, definitely right up there next year. So we're very excited for Priscilla. <laughs> Uh, our next award is Defensive Player of the Year, and that was going to Carly Caveney. She actually has her graduation party right now, so she's not able to attend. Um, without Carly and our defensive unit, offensive unit, our whole team, again, I can't say it enough that it was a team effort in everything we did this season. So all the girls know that I don't really love individual awards because, again, we are a team and we did that together. But Without Carly as a leader and a captain on this team, it would have been hard to kind of even out our defensive unit with also with LT back there. So it was great to have her. So our next award, we're going to Offensive Player of the Year. This goes to a girl who I would say never gives up, works her butt off 24-7, uh, would do anything. I sent her a video and I got a text from her mother and it was like 12 o'clock at night saying that she was out there with her little brother <laughs> trying to do what was on the video to prepare for our next game. So it just shows what she will do to, to continue to get better. She finished this season with 57 goals, 22 assists, 104 draw controls, 42 ground balls. She was a national tournament player. She'll be playing at Holy Cross in two years. And she scored our buzzer beater with .25 seconds left on the clock to get us into the championship. So with a total of 95 goals for her career, Brynn Carroll. So I'm going to turn it over to my assistant coach, Cece, to present the next award. Spicy. Spice is going to move it because she's about a foot taller than Carrie. All right. So in 2014, I was proudly hired to be the girls' freshman coach for a team that did not exist in 2014. So in 2014, I stalked a player to her car. That player is our 2015 season MVP, Lauren Trepanay. So before you, y'all, you can come hang out. You can be awkward. You can stand by the stage if you want. You're going to hang out for a second? Over the past two seasons, I've had the absolute pleasure of watching LT grow into the consistent and amazing player she is today. And <laughs> I'm going to get emotional. From a career-high 19 saves against Andover this season, to a stellar 55% against her hometown Sohegan on their senior night, to an incredible final seven minutes in our first ever D1 state title, our eighth and helmeted defender has been our rock. LT is in the house. She's in our hearts and she's the player who changed my life forever. I cannot wait to see what you do on the field at Merrimack and beyond. Come up here, let's go. Again, I would just like to express how thankful I am to our administration, BG, and again to all the athletes for the hard work and dedication, and especially to the parents for driving them, picking them up, feeding them, and all the rest of us and everything that you guys do. So that's the spring of 2015. Um, in closing, I just want to just add a couple things. So many people have brought you, the student athletes, to this point. The seniors, we're all very proud of you. Uh, we look forward to seeing great things from you in your college playing careers, if you so choose to go on. Uh, spring season, everyone always asks me, what's the toughest season? And I always say the spring. Who knew that at the beginning of the season, with all that snow on the ground, we'd start and we would get this entire season in 
uh, but through a lot of hard work and dedication through all of you, uh, here we are. And uh, again, tremendous seasons by everyone. So I always say, I hope you've had some fun, learned a few things along the way. Um, and you student athletes, uh, I don't know if you understand the sacrifices your parents make, uh, financial sacrifice to, to have you attend such a great school like Bishop Girton and to do all of the other things, as Coach D'Ambrose just said, they keep you going throughout the year. You know, in your highs and your lows, when you're feeling bad, they pick you up. They give you a reality check sometimes if your head's a little too big, if you think you're a little too big for your britches. Um, so it's, it's the, their parents do so much. So in some way, shape, or form, I hope you can say thank you to them for everything that they do throughout the entire school year and throughout this spring season. So some of the teams have already, have already met prior to this part of the, of the awards, awards night. Some of them will be breaking down into the smaller groups and giving out letters, pins, and certificates. Uh, I know the softball team and the boys tennis team, excuse me, girls tennis team, have already done so. So the, the other groups that are here will break down into the following locations. The baseball team will be headed to the cafeteria. The, I'm sorry, yes, the Boys lacrosse team, none of the members are here, so they're going to have something a little separate. Same with the boys volleyball team, except for Joe. <laughs> girls lacrosse can stay right here in the main gymnasium. Boys and girls outdoor track will head down to the AV room. And boys tennis will be headed to the junior senior locker room. Did I miss anybody? Okay. We'll be moving on. I want to thank you all for coming. MVPs, please come up to the stage. MVPs for one more group photo.